The Business Report, brought to you by the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme, a department of the Ministry of Youth and Community Empowerment, supporting young entrepreneurs from idea to enterprise. It's Wednesday, so tonight we take a look at one of the clients of the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme. And as we hear in this report from Lisa Lord, it's something special. In a world of chocolatey treats, Malicia Batson is a specialist. Whether it's her infused dark chocolates or decadent chocolate dipped strawberries, she's mastered the art of making these delicious sweet treats look even more mouth watering. The self taught chocolatier is the visionary behind Gems Gourmet Chocolates. I taught myself how to make chocolates, and then we also do edible fruit arrangements, which I also taught myself. So it's a business that I formulated to help with the family because I had lost my job several years ago and what could I do to help my husband, you know, make extra money to support the family. So that's how I came up with GEMS because it's supposed to be a family thing. <laughs> and yeah, so um, chocolates then became a passion and learning how to do edible fruit arrangements then along the way. GEMS spells out the initials of the names of her husband, two children, and of course, herself. Ms. Batson says she chose to specialize in dark chocolate because it's actually pretty good for you, and the evidence is there. People who um, are more on the health conscious side and looking for something to indulge in, basically, you can come to GEMS because we do fruits and our chocolate is healthy chocolate. We use a 70% dark chocolate. So it's very healthy for you. And we only, we, we don't put additives, sugars, preservatives, nothing in our, in any of our products, none whatsoever. So even if you are a diabetic, for example, I'm not saying to sit down and eat the whole bar, but it is a safer um, version. She says while the average Barbadian with a sweet tooth is accustomed to the processed chocolate bars, Gourmet chocolates are getting a much better response in recent times as people become more health conscious. We are getting a little bit more exposure. Um, so a lot of people are, yeah, our market has increased over the years. It took a little while because of, of course you have to educate people mm -hmm. and let them know that we're here. Um, we've just gotten into Massey. And I think we've only been in Massey uh, a couple of months, uh, so let's say from October last year. So people are beginning to see who we are and understand and love our chocolate. GEMS has four chocolate bars on the market, and they have secured a partnership with Old Brigham for the rum-infused bar. She's even explored exporting her products, but like many small businesses, she has found the process somewhat prohibitive given the costs associated with changing labels and packaging. So for now, Ms. Batson is concentrating on growing her business locally and has received help in that regard from the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme. A lot of us who are entrepreneurs are maybe creatives. We focus merely on the creating side of the business. But when it comes to, you know, you got to make sure your books yeah. are in order. You got to make sure that when somebody asks a question, even in interviewing and being able to speak about the business, they've helped us because they've, they've done workshops along the way. The edible arrangement side of the business is also going well, with them being a hit for special occasions. Now her talent for creating this eye candy has been recognized at the national level. She entered the National Independence Festival of Creative Arts, or NIFCA, two years ago and won big, taking home the Governor General's Award of Excellence and the Culinary Arts Challenge Trophy Award. You can find Gems Gourmet Chocolates on both Facebook and Instagram. Lisa Lord for the Business Report. Do you have an idea for a business or have started a business? Are you between 18 and 30 years old? Then you need to contact YES, the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme. YES is a dynamic network of services creatively packaged for you, the young entrepreneur. YES offers critical, timely business solutions, specialized technical assistance in accounting, legal, and marketing, a practical entrepreneurial training program, and your own youth enterprise officer for one-on-one -on -one counseling and mentoring. 
contact Yes Today at 535-3835 and get your business moving. The Youth Entrepreneurship School, Ministry of Youth and Community Empowerment. The Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry has been exploring the establishment of a memorandum of understanding with Kenya's Chamber of Commerce. Senior members of the chamber, including President Patricia Tanis, recently held a meeting with representatives from the Kenyan delegation and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to explore the opportunity for the establishment of the MOU. The meeting was one of many held during the recent official visit of the President of the Republic of Kenya. Both parties agreed the MOU would detail opportunities and areas of cooperation. At the beginning of June, the Barbados Water Authority put out a prohibition notice and this was out of concern about the drought conditions which the country is currently facing, coupled with lowering water levels in several reservoirs and other sources of water. To explain what this prohibition notice means, we have the technical advisor to the Barbados Water Authority, Dr. John Mwanza. Dr. Mwanza, this is not the first time that the BWA has put out a prohibition notice, but it is is very critical for the island. Yes, it is. But uh, what we need to understand is that generally when you talk about drought for water supply purposes, you are talking about the rainfall period, which is between June and end of November. Yes. That is the period when you get significant rainfall to recharge the aquifer. What falls during the dry season generally does not contribute to recharging the groundwater, but instead is taken up by the plants. So it reduces the demand from getting water from the groundwater. What has happened in this particular case is that we, because of the amount of rain that we had last year, we started experiencing rising salinity levels in some of our uh, wells and we realized that was not getting any better now for us to recover from that there are two things we could do we could stop pumping in which case the salt water will, 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 will disappear or we could reduce pumping or hope that we get enough rainfall the prohibition notice for now goes up to uh, November, August, sorry. If by chance we get some improvement in the amount of rainfall that falls in July and we are able to reduce the salinity or the salt water, the salt in the water, then we'll be in a position to make a decision as to whether we continue the, the prohibition or stop it. The prohibition notice basically asks persons to reduce excessive use of water. Hence, it would speak to persons not using hoses to wash their cars or water plants, using instead a bucket or in the case of watering plants, a watering can. Um, companies that do use water within their businesses, they've been asked to use hoses with the shutoff, the automatic shutoff, and of course hoses that would push a certain amount of pressure per minute. So it is a matter of all of us just being cautious, paying close attention to how we use the water that we do use, cut out the excessive usage, and as has been happening, even crop over promoters with their FETs have had to sort of relook and review the way that they would use water at the various parties, that it can still be used, but obviously not in an excessive manner. A lot of us tend to use water, running water, to either thaw meat or when we're peeling vegetables. We need to stop that practice. Just take a bowl, catch the water in the bowl and use it at that point. Um, when we're brushing our teeth, when we're having a shower, we let that water run. When we're shaving, that's unnecessary. You can use a cup, you can just put some water in the sink. Just make sure that you don't leave the tap running while you do those everyday chores. Um, and even in the shower, once we want that warm water 
we let the cold water just run down the tap, the drain, actually. No, what we can do is put a bucket into the bath and catch that cold water before it gets to the temperature that we do actually want and use that to water your plants, wash the car, wash down the driveway, do the other um, chores around the house that you really can use secondary water for. So for more information on that prohibition notice, you can go to our website, www.barbadiswaterauthority.com or our Facebook page, or just type Water Wednesdays in YouTube. You can find us there. It is the liquid of life.